welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here happy friday it is currently thursday when i'm filming this video because as i mentioned last week we are once again heading to the lake for the weekend so i weighed in this morning which is actually one full week from my last weigh-in although it's one day early from my traditional weigh-in it's been a full week since my last weigh-in so it's going to be a full week weigh-in update for you guys so i'm excited to share that with you as well as the topic for this week's workshop i did just hop online and print off the topic read through it and I love it. It's right up my alley, so I can't wait to share my tips and tricks when it comes to this week's topic as well. So without further ado, let's jump into how my week went, my way in, and this week's WW Virtual Workshop. Well, I hope you guys had a fantastic week this last week. I hope things are starting to get back to a little bit of more normalcy for you. It is definitely for me, although I am really missing going to Jazzercise. For me, I just don't have as much motivation to work out at home as I do when I'm actually in studio. So I didn't work out at all this last week. I didn't do a single day of Jazzercise. I had intentions to do so, but this week got away from me. We finally got our air conditioner while our heat pump fixed at our house. We had people in and out for a couple days. It just wasn't conducive to being able to do Jazzercise. And then it was playing catch up on work, real estate, and YouTube the rest of the week. And Jazzercise just didn't happen at all this last week, which I'm bummed out about. I really wanted to get back in to the swing of regular exercise. So that is my goal this next week. I already have it on my calendar to do Jazzercise three times with a fourth day as a possibility if I can make it work with my schedule. So I have been a little bit struggling when it comes to activity. Now, I did get in quite a bit of steps just working in my yard. I get in a ton of steps camping because I'm walking to and from the lake. We're walking the dogs. So I'm getting in, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 steps during camping. But then I'm only getting eight or 9,000 steps the rest of the week. So I really need to up my exercise game. So that is this next week's goal. I'll be reporting back next Friday and letting you guys know how many days of jazzercise that I did. As far as my eating went this week, it was okay. I overindulged a little bit camping and then there was another day this week that I was way over my points calories for the day, but I'm testing out a theory this next week and I'll share that with you in next week's weigh-in. I'm going to do a little bit of calorie zigzagging this next week, which basically is the same thing as eating within your points every day and then eating your weekly points one day or two days a week. So I am going to be trying that this week. I'll report back a little bit more on how that goes on this next week's weigh-in. And if it's something that I really enjoy that I can see myself continuing doing, I'll make sure that I fill you guys in in a video on that as well. So let's talk a little bit about this week's topic. This week's, to this week's topic is near and dear to my heart. We are talking talking about meal planning, planning your meal so that you're not at the last minute at the end of a really long day, just grabbing anything that you can get your hands on because you're starving by planning a little bit. Now, this doesn't mean meal prepping. If that's not your jam, this doesn't mean you have to meal prep. It's planning meals, snacks to have on hand so that when you are at the end of a long day and you're starving, you have healthy WW friendly items to choose. By doing a little bit of planning, it leaves us room in our budget to have the foods that we love because we've kind of planned out our day. And if we know that we're coming home after a long day of work or maybe kids activities or running a lot of errands, we can plan for that during our day by eating a little less point heavy item so that it allows us those extra points for dinner when we know we're going to be home and starving and want to eat whatever we can get our hands on. So doing a little bit of planning really helps us be successful. I preach this as you guys know all the time. I use my meal planner to plan my dinners. I also meal prep because for me having a breakfast, lunch, and snack on hand just really helps me stay on track. That way I'm not going into my pantry looking around, picking anything that I can get my hands on or that looks good. I've got it all planned out and ready to go. So I want to share some tips with you on 
meal planning. So first let's talk about snacking. It's really important to plan out your snacks. Figure out what snacks you're going to have that day, how many points are you going to spend on those snacks, and you can put those snacks into a basket, literally. You can take a basket, put your snacks in there, and those are your snacks for the day. That prevents you from going back to the fridge or the pantry and picking additional snacks. You have them in a basket and ready to go, and those are your snacks. When that basket is empty, your snacks for the day that you've accounted for in your points are gone. You can even write yourself little post-it notes or reminders in your fridge, whatever it takes for you to make sure that your snacks are planned out and that you stay within your smart points budget. I love this because I plan my snacks in my tracker, but maybe having them in one central area like a basket or in my refrigerator stacked up would make a lot more sense. Then I just reach, grab, eat, and when they're gone, snacks for the day are done. Another fantastic tip when it comes to snacks is pre-portion them out. So those animal crackers of your kids that have been staring at you from inside your pantry, put those into individual bags that you've counted, weighed, whatever it is that you do with your snacks, have them pre-portioned. So if you see those animal crackers staring at you, you grab a pre-portioned bag, you know exactly how many points are in that, you track it, you eat it, you move on. So by pre-packaging and pre-planning out your snacks that way, it's also going to prevent you from overeating those snacks and you can still have the snacks that you love and your kids' snacks that are constantly staring at you within your pantry. Next is plan where your food goes. When you see that basket full of snacks on your counter, your little post-it note in the fridge, or your meal prepped lunches, snacks in your refrigerator, it triggers you to choose those items. They're there, they're within sight. Remember, out of sight, out of mind. We never wanna put the things that we should be eating out of sight, out of mind. We want them in the forefront. So when we open our fridge, our cupboard, our pantry, we see those items and those are what we reach for. So it's important to leave your snack basket out on a counter or if they're cold items, stack them up in the very front of your fridge so that's the first thing you see when you go in your kitchen, your refrigerator, or your pantry. Next is plan where you'll eat. Eat. I love this one so much, you guys. Sit down and eat your meals. Don't stand at the kitchen counter. Don't bring it into your office and be on a Zoom call or a video call or working and eating because you're not mindfully eating. You're eating while you're doing something else, so you're not really even enjoying and you're not triggering your mind that you've eaten that food that's going to make you feel satiated. So it's very important to focus on your meal, sit down at a table, Eat your meal and don't do anything else. Don't scroll on your phone, don't watch YouTube, don't work. Eat your meal and then get back to whatever task it was that you need to be working on. I also love this last one so much and this is plan out how much you're going to eat. So when you're making dinner, dish up your plate, make sure that you weigh and measure whatever it is that you're putting on your plate and then dish up your family and immediately pack up the leftovers. Hey, if someone wants a second serving, they can get in the fridge and grab a second serving. Chances are it'll still be warm, and if not, there's a microwave. So make sure that you're packaging up whatever is left over, you're putting it in the fridge, out of sight, out of mind. We're not gonna be going back for seconds. We're not going to be picking little by little out of what was left over from dinner or lunch. It just is going to make staying within what you planned for that meal a little bit easier. So I love this topic. I think it's extremely relevant to every single one of us in some facet. Whether we're a meal prepper or not, it's still relevant. We always need to plan, and that means putting it on our grocery list, buying it at the grocery store, and having it in our house pre-portioned out if necessary, in a basket of snacks if necessary, so that it helps us stay on track. I love this idea so much. I do this every single week anyways, but I know that a lot of you are not planners and preppers, which is fine, but doing just these couple little steps is really going to help you on your journey. So now let's talk about my way in. So as I mentioned, I slacked big time on Jazzercise this week. I didn't do a single day. I did get in my steps, like I mentioned, so I'm grateful for that, but I need to get back to doing my Jazzercise. I certainly don't want to lose the strength and the endurance that I built up while doing Jazzercise, and if I go weeks and weeks without that, that's definitely going to make going back a lot harder. So my goal for this week is I'm going to do Jazzercise on Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then Monday is an option as well. It just depends on how I'm feeling after Sunday and making sure I'm not too sore to do Tuesday and Wednesday back to back. So three to four times this week is the goal. My also goal this week is calorie zigzagging, which I'll explain a little bit more next week, let you guys know how it goes. I don't wanna go too much into detail because I don't even know how it's gonna be, if it's gonna work, and we'll know at next week's weigh-in and how this next week goes. So I'll fill you guys in 
for sure. So when I stepped on the scale today, I am down 0.2, which is not very much. I'm happy I didn't gain. I'm happy I didn't maintain. I know that getting in that extra movement is really going to help. And hopefully doing this little test run with calories and points is going to help as well. So I'll take the 0.2 loss. It's better than nothing. And that means that I lost again in the month of June, even though it wasn't very much, it's still a loss. And remember you guys, point this and point that add up to a pound. So that's it, you guys. I have goals and plans for this next week to have a good weigh in next week. I'm hoping to lose at least two pounds next week. So this is what's happening. So let me know down in the comments how your week was. Did you weigh in? Did you gain? Did you lose? How are you feeling now that things are starting to get back a little bit more normal? Is that helping you on your weight loss journey? Any questions that you have, I'm happy to help leave those down in the comments. If you're new, I'd love for you to stick around. Just hit that little subscribe button and the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. I do upload a weigh-in every single week, so you don't want to miss out on that and all the other videos I upload. Give this one a big thumbs up if you enjoy these workshop recaps and these weekly weigh-ins. And of course, comment down below. I can't wait to hear from you guys. I'm thinking about you. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, healthy. I love you so much. And I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. It's going to be another big one and it's got camping involved. So it's going to be a ton of fun. So stay tuned for that. Have a great Friday. Bye. Bye.